How's it about popping this debuff reaction to this vid by court cases? This is five reactions of innocent convicts set free. I got on these glasses because a mosquito caught me slipping. It, it caught me slipping, and uh, my eye is crazy swollen at the moment. So we're, we're not about to just be sitting on camera with no swollen, busted looking eye. I'm not doing that, and I'm not going to skip a day. You know, it's my first day back, um, back home in L.A. from Brazil, and... Um, yeah, we're not skipping today, so we're just going to, you know, keep pushing and improvise. That's why I put these glasses on. Anyway, let's, uh, oh, hell no. Let me not, <laughs> let me not turn too much to the side because then you could probably see. Let's hop into the video. <laughs> I got a fucking. An immigrant was accused of killing two women. A man who was sentenced to die literally was on death row. So it's the case of this guy named Clemente Aguirre. And if I tell you this story, you'll say, you gotta be making that up. It can't be true. 14 years, four months, in 19 days, and then incarcerated. And didn't even do it. And gave three months of them in death row. Damn. On June 25th, 2004, in Altamonte, Florida, 24 year old Clemente was indicted on charges of first degree murder and burglary. Oh, he was yelling in the corner, like, commit. I didn't do this the shit. Start, Aguirre Harkin this is said he up. found the women dead, that he tried to help, and that's how their blood oh. got on his clothes and his footprints. It was a gruesome crime that found his neighbors, 68-year-old Carol Burris and 47-year-old Cheryl Williams, stabbed to death. Oh. I didn't do it. I don't care about it. However, despite Clemente protesting his innocence, Police decided he was the only possible suspect, and he was sentenced to death. Damn, In the 14 that's years fucked on death row, he was trying Clemente to help those ladies. Stopped trying to clear his name, and he wasn't wrong either. As it turns out, Samantha, Shell's daughter, prior to the murder, was diagnosed with intermittent explosive disorder. Within inches of the mother's body, and in a bathroom where the state argued the killer cleaned up is the daughter's blood, Ooh. a trail of the daughter's blood going to the bathroom, and then the mother's blood on the outside of the daughter's window. And there's mm. in the doctor's notes, a few years before this happened, where she says to her mother, I'm gonna kill you. Wow. Gonna kill all of you. Then we find out that she has confessed all over town. We had people coming in all over the place, testifying affidavits that she said, I killed my mother and my grandmother, I'll do it to you. With such irrefutable evidence implicating Cheryl's daughter, the day finally arrived for Clemente. I didn't know that nobody believed me. I said, you know what? Besides my mother, nobody believed me. And I thank you for it. From the bottom of my heart. He holds back tears and immediately heads towards friends Free and family man. to celebrate. But today is a brighter day. I tell you one motherfucking thing. If y'all send me to jail for some shit I didn't do, for killing some niggas, and, and, and then let me out, I'm going to start killing some niggas. Now, now I'm a murderer. Now I'm killing people because y'all got me fucked up. Why the fuck you had me in jail and you didn't even have all the evidence that I did this? Now it's time to kill. Dang. This is now, fucked up. I'm glad he got out. hopes for the future. This is Devontae Sanford, who in 2007 was sentenced to 37 to 90 years in prison. Damn. A horrific quadruple murder that he did not commit. Quadruple. He was only 14 years old at the time. Uh. Devontae was walking outside his home in his pajamas when he was arrested just three blocks away from a vicious crime scene involving four people and an AK-47 assault rifle. Devontae was taken to the local police station where it turns out that the police coerced him into a false confession with the use of leading questions and feeding him facts from the case. To make matters worse, his lawyer at the time didn't help by convincing him to enter a guilty plea. His current lawyer had this to say. In the course of their targeting him, they literally fabricated evidence and committed perjury mm. in order to ensure that this young man, uh, that they could get a conviction. But just three weeks later, there was another twist in this tale. And that twist came in the form of hitman Vincent Smothers. Mm -hmm. Smothers was arrested for 12 murders, four of which turned out to be the case that Sanford was convicted for. The lack of action from the justice courts got the attention of the Northwestern Center of Wrongfully Convicted Youths. 
who pushed to reopen the case which led to De Monte's freedom in 2016. It was a homecoming nine years in the making. <laughs> Interestingly enough, Devante is thankful to one particular person for his freedom. Smothers. Hmm. He protected me. Not the cops. The cops took advantage of him. It's because of this man. You know, I'm able to walk and breathe and just, you know, be at peace. He said, I killed them people. He all did. All that time spent wrongfully incarcerated may have taken his time on who found it hard acclimatizing back into regular society. Yeah, I have recorded like this in a month, damn man. Sanford, the 25-year-old, was convicted of murder here in Detroit, then exonerated and released from prison. He was arrested for assault in 2018, and this time, there was no hitman to take the heat. Oh. In 1991, Queens, New York, 19-year-old Gregory Counts and 21-year-old Van Dyke Perry was sentenced to life in prison for a crime they did not commit. The victim was held on knife point out front of her queen's home, thrown into a car, and driven <laughs> to Central Park, where she was then raped multiple times. She claimed that the men responsible were Counts, Perry, and a third unknown man. In 2017, after having already served 11 years, the Innocence Project reinvestigated the Counts and Perry case using DNA that was retested. DNA cleared both Counts and Perry from the semen found on the victim. It led to a man who was deceased. Weird, right? So why would the victim make up such a heinous story and send two innocent men to jail? The answer will get your blood boiling. The complainant now admits that her boyfriend forced him to lie <gasps> and falsely claimed these men sexually assaulted her. Her boyfriend wow. was trying to avoid having to pay a debt to these two men. What? For a boyfriend avoiding debt, the things we do for money. Yo, broke ass. Let's have a look as both Counts and Perry sit in court, hearing the sweet sound of freedom echoing throughout. They do their best to hold back their emotions. Nah. She needs to go to jail. What's happening to her? Although they are free and reintegrating back into society now, it's clear that this horrible, unjust story will haunt both these men for the rest of their lives. It's never going to be over. The reason why is because it tormented my life and it's my past. 1993, New Jersey. 22-year-old Tito Marino was murdered in his video store. Another gruesome death by stabbing. Eric Kelly and Ralph Lee were both convicted of a crime they had no connection to. The whole story was put together by police using coercion and a sketchy eyewitness. They then used those statements against Lee and that's how they nailed their conviction. It wasn't until once again the Innocence Projects got involved in their case that Eric and Ralph felt a bit of hope. And the state has just dug in their heels ever since. They refused to investigate this other person, refused to talk to him, didn't look into his history, and instead are just um, you know, blindly clinging to this conviction at all costs. Mm. Lee was released after 11 years. However, it wasn't until 2018, after having spent 24 years in prison, that Kelly was finally given back his freedom after new DNA evidence was presented to the judge in court. Get him out. Interestingly enough, we find Judge Joseph Portelli in full Karen mode. Shut the hell up. Yes, it is. We're not sure about you, but freedom after 24 years of wrongful Fuck out of here. Seems like a pretty good reason to say. That's celebrate. such a stupid thing to say. Kelly and Lee didn't let this dampen their moods. Both were hungry, high in spirits, and thankful for everyone that had played a part in their release. <laughs> Amy, I want to with a care <laughs> moment. A little old we all be with my legal team. I want to thank them. I want to thank my family. All first and foremost, all it's been a long time. Breathe in. I just don't know. I'm just I'm worried, I'm just feeling good right now. That's all. What would you want somebody who didn't know anything about your case to know? I'm very sad. I'm very sad. My face already don't even work. All's well. 
Good end swap. I'm just trying to adjust and my now. thermostat because it's cold now. Right, in the case of People vs. Juan Ignacio Catalan, is that it. your true name? This is Juan Catalan, the man saved by sitcom. An alibi caught on camera, but not in the way you think. On May 13th, 2003, 16-year-old Martha Puebla, a witness in the case of a gang slaying, was shot and killed in front of her home in Sun Valley, California. Mm. It wasn't until three months later that the FBI arrested 24-year-old Juan Catalan during a raid in front of his family's machine shop. Juan was interrogated for hours. It seemed like they already had a huge amount of evidence against him. A witness sketch that looks like you. A witness that was supposed to take the stand against your brother gets murdered in cold blood. It doesn't look good. Mm. But Juan consistently pleads his innocence, telling officers that they're trying to pin this crime on the wrong person. You guys are gonna take away my life for this f***ing bull****. Oh, this you killed somebody. Wait a minute, a little very strong word right there. I did not kill nobody, I would never kill nobody. I would never do anything to hurt anybody. What? How? As things get sticky, Juan remembered that he was at a Dodgers game with his daughter on that day. But a stadium full of tens of thousands of people. They can find what are the chances that someone captured him there? Yeah. And even more so, the chances that you'd be able Got to retrieve said footage. Yeah. Well, this is where this case becomes wild. Juan remembered he was on TV, but not the Dodgers cam. It just so happened that Larry David the creator of Seinfeld and star of the HBO show Curb Your Enthusiasm was shooting an episode in the exact same aisle oh, as Catalan and his shit. daughter. The episode was that I picked up a hooker in the carpool lane and took her to Dodger Stadium. What are the chances? Juan's lawyer contacted HBO, got access to the footage of that episode and ran the tapes. Hours of research brought no results and he was running out of tape and felt like he wasn't going to get what he needed. And then, there it was, the once-in-a-lifetime chance of an alibi caught on tape. And I pointed at the screen, and I said, that's him, that's him, roll that back. This footage, combined with a phone call made to his girlfriend at the exact time he was leaving the stadium, led to his case being thrown out. Wow. What are the chances? Aww. Both detectives were found guilty of coercion and Bitch. falsifying their reports. As for Juan, That's what can you say? Talk about being in the right place at the right time. From wow, getting the tickets that. on the day of to being caught on camera, well, what are the chances that out of you know 56, 58,000 seats that you know they're filming on my aisle? You know, I look at it like I did win the lottery you because did. I got a new opportunity at life you know with my family good for him i'm glad they were able to retrieve that footage and and set him free this is real trifling how terrible this legal system is so many people go to jail who did not commit these crimes and that one man that they let free and then they said that he got arrested for um assault some time later i hope they took it easy on him because you just had him in jail for hella years over some shit he didn't even do so yeah he's on edge he probably got out and was like triggered you know somebody probably stepped on his shoes or pushed him or looked at him the wrong way and he snapped so you know cut that man some slack i don't know what he did but i stand beside him and uh i support him and and you know being triggered and, and going off on niggas you know hopefully he didn't do nothing too heinous but if it was just like simple assault and he like took off on somebody or something then it's like Cut that man some slack. Anyway, uh, this is real trifling. Y'all be careful out there. Because just being in the wrong place at the wrong time could get you convicted of some shit you didn't even do. It's sad. Y'all let me know what y'all thought, though. Let me know what other videos you're going to watch, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye!